Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Erin Sadler from Sadler Science. Today we're talking about the science and engineering practices, which are a game changer in the way that students learn and explore science. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're interested in learning more, I'm going to post information in the notes about how to sign up for my email list. And when you sign up for the email list, you'll get my three free 3D lesson planner. And I'll also post information about how to get science and engineering practice task cards that are written specifically for your grade band. Let's get started. So let's start by talking about what the science and engineering practices are. The science and engineering practices are fundamental to the next generation science standards. Unlike the traditional scientific method, which follows a linear approach, these practices can be used together in many different ways and empower students to deeply engage in the process of science and engineering. There are eight science and engineering practices, asking questions and defining problems, developing and using models, planning and carrying out investigations, analyzing and interpreting data, using math and computational thinking, constructing explanations and designing solutions, engaging in an argument from evidence, obtaining and evaluating and communicating information. One of the questions I get asked most is how the science and engineering practices differ from the scientific method. In the past, we relied heavily on teaching the scientific method in our science classes. I'll spend a little bit more time going over what's wrong with the scientific method in another video, but I'll give you a brief overview here. When I taught the scientific method, we asked students to start with a question, create a hypothesis, and conduct an investigation to gather evidence. Then the students were asked to analyze the data and draw a conclusion about the accuracy of their original hypothesis. Unfortunately, this approach gives students the mistaken impression that science follows a linear pathway like this. Another problem is that students were asked to look at all of those pieces at once, so they never really got good at any of the steps. Also, this approach leaves out many of the practices that scientists use, for example, modeling, and it never addresses engineering at all. The science and engineering practices intend to address some of these issues. So how do we teach these practices? Teaching the science and engineering practices isn't about just listing them off. It's about integration and application. I like to use the toolbox analogy. Let's say that you're doing some house projects and I just hand you my entire toolbox and say, here's everything that you're gonna need. That wouldn't be super helpful. Instead, if I taught you how to use each tool one at a time, you'd probably have a better understanding of what each tool does and you'd probably have more success. This scenario is analogous to the major differences between the practices and the scientific method. The scientific method is the whole toolbox. The tools are the individual practices. Let's take it one step further. What if I asked you what projects you need to accomplish before I introduce the tools? Let's say that you tell me that you need to hang up several pictures. So we get out a hammer and some nails. I spend a few minutes showing you how to use the hammer and nails, and then we work together to hang up the first picture. After that, I back off a little bit and let you hang the rest of the pictures by yourself. I'm there to answer questions and offer support, but I'm not hanging the pictures for you. This is the most ideal way to introduce the science and engineering practices. I didn't just introduce the tool, I introduced it in context. You should do the same with the science and engineering practices. You've probably figured out by now that I'm not super handy, so you'll have to forgive my tool using misconceptions if I have any here, but I like this analogy because it works in so many ways. Bear with me just a little bit longer as we continue with this analogy. After we hang up the pictures, we could tackle the next project. Maybe you want to build a simple piece of furniture. You already know how to use the hammer to nail the pieces together, but you'll want to learn how to use a saw to cut the pieces to be the right size. We'll work together to learn how to use the saw in the same way that we did with the hammer. Again, this is true with the science and engineering practices. Once a student knows how to use a practice, they can layer it with other practices. Another question I get asked is how do I choose what practice to work with? Most teachers tend to focus on the science and engineering practice that is associated with a performance expectation. Here are some third grade standards. The performance expectations are listed at the top. 
The performance expectations explain how the NGSS are to be addressed, and there's one science and engineering practice for each performance expectation. So if you're teaching your third graders about balanced and unbalanced forces, you're going to use the practice of planning and carrying out investigations because that should be utilized in the assessment. However, that doesn't mean that you only have to focus on that practice. In reality, you can choose any of the practices to work with depending on what activities you're doing in class. So for example, if I'm introducing a phenomenon, I'm going to use the science and engineering practice of asking questions through a notice and wonder activity. Then maybe I'll have students create a model to explain their observations. Using multiple science and engineering practices helps students understand how they work together. And this method helps deepen their understanding of science in general. Before we wrap up, there's a few other basic things I like to think about when I'm incorporating the practices into my lessons. The first is that these practices fall loosely into three buckets that explain how they can be used. The practices can be used for investigating, sense making, and critiquing. The practice of asking questions, as well as planning and carrying out investigations and math and computational thinking fall under the investigating category. Analyzing and interpreting data, as well as de developing and using models and constructing explanations and designing solutions fall into the sense making bucket. Finally, engaging in an argument from evidence and obtaining, evaluating and communicating inf information tend to fall into the critiquing category. There's a lot of overlap and these distinctions aren't totally perfect, but they've helped me choose which practice I'd like to use given the context. I'm also going to refer you to the NSTA matrix for the science and engineering practices. This document explains what the practices look like in each grade band in a lot more depth. I've also turned this document into sets of task cards for each grade band, so if you're interested, I'll link those below. Or you can get more information by signing up for my newsletter. When you sign up, like I told you before, I'll send you my 3D lesson planner for free. All of that information is linked below. So now that we've done a really quick overview of the science and engineering practices, let me know what your questions are and I'd love to answer them below.